Good morning, my brothers and sisters, coming to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God, a God whose wisdom is greater than we could ever understand, a God who knows exactly what he's doing. We just have to trust him. Praise God for that. Our word of encouragement comes from Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling up the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvester, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Uh, I think it's obvious here as we read this passage that uh, what God is talking about or what Jesus is talking about in this parable is the fact that why do we have sin? Why do we have sinners? Why does God not just take out people who are sinners? Well, the sinners are the weeds. The sinners are uh, doing the evil. They're doing the work of the devil. Even if they don't know it, um, they are encouraging and, and, and those things that are against God. We live in this world today where um, you know we have certainly corrupt politicians and, and i know that we always have we have uh, kind of corrupt people in all areas of life it seems like we have those who who really just aren't serving god uh, and don't want to serve god maybe they don't know god or they don't believe in god or, you know whatever the case is but there's all those people out there and of course uh, we get to our, our our tvs and the internet and we read um, these headlines from across the country and around the world and there are some truly evil vicious people out there uh, people who um, are depraved and and doing bad things uh, bad things to each other bad things to uh, uh, fellow mankind bad things to kids um, and sometimes just horrific things and yet we hear the question sometimes at least I do as a pastor is why doesn't God just take them out well it's it's the same thing here uh, the reality is is that God doesn't take them out because he might because there might inadvertently be good people who are sifted out good people who are or are lost you know, every one of these um, bad people have parents who love them possibly or kids who love them or others who may love them who may be turned away from God or turned away from the kingdom because of it. There's there's just any kind of reason that that we want to everyone to have the utmost chance. The other thing is, is that we have to understand that there is no sin too great for God to overcome. Uh, apostasy is the only thing I believe mentioned in the Bible. Uh, a person who knows God and then goes back and says there is no God. Uh, that's kind of what they talk about for apostasy. That person uh, has, I believe the Hebrew said he's committed the unforgivable sin. Um, but short of that, all sin can be forgiven by God. And if we look at the Apostle Paul's life, uh, we know that he considered himself uh, the worst of sinners um, because of what he'd done before he was saved. Um, and yet, God used him in a mighty way to reach the Gentiles. And so when we see someone who is full of evil, when we see someone doing these bad things, our real response is, Lord, let's pray for them. Let's surround them with prayer. Let's, let's, let's cover them with prayer in hopes that the evil within them would be rooted out. You know, we don't see to, in today's time of, of evil spirits being pulled out of people, but in there's a sense, I think, that we still need that to happen, that people who are full of evil uh, need to have... Jesus cast those evils out. And the best way we can do that is through faith and prayer. So let's pray today for those who are hurting. Let's pray today for those who are doing bad things. Let's pray today um, and thank God for his protection of them just because he may be saving them in the long run or he may be saving those around them. We know that in the end that God wins. We've been told this over and over again. We believe it in our hearts. We don't know when that time will come, but eventually God will end. And those who choose not God will be gathered up. Um, and, and cast away. Let's praise God for the fact that we still have time to save people. Even people that may be bad according to our morals or our society, God still has time to save them. Praise God for that. Praise God that he hasn't given up on them and he hasn't given up on us. Really, none of us deserve God's grace, but because God's grace is out there, it's for everyone. And for that, we thank God. Father God, thank you for today for your grace. Thank you, God, that when we were in the midst of our sin, that you continued to reach out to us and that there came a day when we chose you to be our Savior. 
And we chose to confess to you all the wrongs that we've done and that you remove them from us and place them on the back of Jesus on the cross that we might be restored to you. Father, today we pray for those who are bent on evil, for those who are full of, of evil spirits or just bad things going on. We pray, Lord, that you would surround them with angels and the spirits would be drawn out. Father, we have no power to claim this, but the power of Jesus can do all these things. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray for those who are struggling, for those who are evil, for those who are, are have all this battle within them. Father, would you remove that from them? Father, would you open our eyes to all the good that you've got going on and the plans that you have? Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. Thank you for the opportunity we have today to minister to others. May we see your hand at work, and may we be encouraged as you are doing the work through our lives. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. Father, we do pray for those who are hurting today. There's those who are facing cancer or other diseases, those who are facing this COVID-19 virus. Be especially close today, today to those who think they may be in their last days. Father, heal those according to your will that you would heal. Father, take those home. But for all, Lord, may they all hear a message of your salvation before it's too late. Father, just be with those today who are struggling mentally or spiritually or physically or financially, whatever the case could be. Father, we thank you for meeting the needs of people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God loves you. There's a purpose and a reason why there's evil around us. And it's so that people still get saved, that people don't get lost. So let's, instead of complaining about it, let's celebrate the fact that God has planned. And let's have a great day in the Lord. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.